Welcome to a very special episode of Black Opinions Matter, motherfucker. I'm Amino Hassan. That's Black Trey. That's Big Jerv. Uh, we had a regular show planned, uh, but then our guest was so great, we just said, fuck it. We're going to go all guest all the time. Our guest is Kareem Green. You know him from Flatbush Misdemeanors, where he plays Dan's stepfather, Kareem, uh, who owns the bike shop. Uh, he is hilarious. He's thoughtful he's uh, you know i just want y'all to listen to this conversation that we had with him we won't be doing p valley today uh we'll do that tomorrow on the overflow for the patreons patreon.com slash count the dings is where you can join in make sure you're logged in you're signed up you're getting the overflows you're getting the watch alongs we'll, we'll have a uh, cinephobe watch along uh on monday but again this is our conversation with very light editing very light editing with Kareem Green. Enjoy. Oh, your know. name is Amin. Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's oh, okay. that's What's just up? my. That's the IG handle, just to, you know, Whatever put it works, out for man. the people. Yeah. He be on that. He be on that star. He be on that star. Star Wars shit as well, like yeah. Darth Vader. Oh, yeah. that's what. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, so, uh, but so, but I mean, means something, though, right? Yeah, yeah. It means honest. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Motherfucker lying about yeah, I ain't never. I, I, <laughs> I would have never thought that shit meant honest, bro. Yo. Lying about his honesty. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> oh, my God. Darth, Darth, I mean. Yeah. Okay. Whatever yeah. works, bro. And I got the mic out, too, so I don't even normally yeah. do the mic. Uh, yeah, I got the mic out. I plug my little USB into the computer for this one. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to keep the audio. I'm one of those guys. I'm a tech, not a super techie, but I am a techie in a sense of I like the audio to be good, the video to be good. You know what I'm saying? Crisp, so crisp yeah. audio. Yeah. So I put, I, you know, I got things that, you know what I'm saying? So when people want to do a Zoom or do a whatever, I have the stuff to facilitate on my behalf. So y'all, y'all stuff, y'all recording will be good too. Man, we, we appreciate it. Definitely. Definitely. That helps. Because sometimes you get that. Sound like a tin can with a string, you know. Yes, yes. I know quality, some people don't. So. Some people don't invest in into to, to technology like we, you know, like this is what we're doing. Like you know, what I'm saying yeah. this is what we're doing. Like why are you not? You know, what I'm saying you got like expensive sneakers or clothes or whatever it is, but this is what's gonna like generate uh, something for you. So why wouldn't you invest in the thing? You know, in the investment. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But you know, a lot of people have a liability mindset, so it is what it is. A liability mindset. Hold on, let me get this intro out the way because this is this bars. is a great start. It's gonna be bars. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's gonna be the name of the show, by the way, Jerv. That's the name of the show today. Oh, uh, liability man. mindset. Yes, liability <laughs> mindset. Today's episode. Uh, black opinions matter, motherfucker. Welcome. My name's Amino Hassan. I'm joined as always by Black Trey and Big Jerv, and we are so blessed today, man, to have. One of our favorite characters from one of our favorite shows, mm -hmm. the one and only Kareem from Flatbush Misdemeanors is on with us today. We'll yeah. get into liability mindset. He dropped knowledge before we even started the show. I don't even, I, I threw me off my whole intro. Just want to <laughs> say real quick to everybody, uh, patreon.com slash count the dings is where you get the extra content. We get the overflow episodes over there. We get the watch alongs. Me, Zach Harper, and Anthony Mays, we're going to watch Geely on Monday, uh, July 25th. So if you're listening to the pod today when it dropped later tonight at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have a watch along for our Patreons for Geely. We're celebrating, I guess, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez getting back together. Uh, <laughs> so patreon.com says count the things. Uh, again, great show for you today. But, man, I'm not even going to waste any time telling you what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk to the man right now. Kareem from Flatbush Misdemeanors. And brother, first of all... Well, hold on. Let me hey, tell you my whole name. My whole name is Kareem Green. Just so you nah, know. man. Your name is Kareem from Flatbush Misdemeanors. <laughs> you, you, you understand this is what happens, right? This, you, you have reached that level of, like, the, the consciousness where people just start calling you... The character. So, like, yeah. Like you, my you guess. Earth, you know how to... Like the, the, the day-day. The day-day. The day -day. Day -day. But, the trick, but the trick is my real name is name Kareem. Is Kareem. That's perfect. I yeah. think, like... Everybody, like my real name is Kareem. Dan's real name is Dan. Kev's real name is Kevin. You know what I'm saying? Like we have all, all our, uh, the first three, us three have the own. I think we think we we're the only ones with the real names in the whole. That's thing. fire though, because like that's, I mean, it carries it carries on. You know what I mean? So even yeah. if somebody's like, "Yo, that's Kareem," and it's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's really Kareem. Right. <laughs> it's really Kareem. Yeah, for sure." 
But do you, do you have that happen to you now where people will approach you and say, Kareem, and you say, where do I know you from? Then you realize, oh, no, they're just fans of the show. No, nah, that hasn't. Well, it hasn't been like Kareem yet, but it has been like, yo, you that actor, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you, 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 you on a right? You on a show, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's getting there. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy for whatever it is right now. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate whatever it is. The, the character of Kareem. Mm -hmm. How much of that the are you? Is that you? Improving and how much of that is something that's written on paper? Well, it's mostly written. Most characters you see is written. Um, but you know, I they give me space to throw in like improv, you know what I'm right. saying, where where it makes sense, you know, and uh where it doesn't throw everybody else off or you know what I'm saying. So basically, yeah, they give me room to uh but um some of the stuff that you see from season one, uh like my first scene, I believe it was from season one, that was improv from the actual web series right that made it mm -hmm. to the tv show so there was just like yo just do do your kareem do the kareem thing and then uh <laughs> and I, I don't know i was just saying whatever i was saying and doing what i was doing and it, and they kept it like sometimes and sometimes we do table reads and i'll say stuff or whatever it is or even on set you know uh they they allow me or they appreciate when i do certain things so you know i i, I would say ooh i'm gonna say it's only maybe 10% improv. I would say 10%. Uh, I'm guessing. Yeah, around 10%. That that that's that's wild, man. Because some of the stuff you say, and I'm like, yo, there's no chance. They wrote that, right? Yeah, there's no chance someone <laughs> yeah. sat down and wrote that. And then I, I'm the other thing I'm thinking is how does everybody keep a straight face? Because your delivery is like it's just there's a punch behind every line, and no pun intended, uh -huh. that you drop. That just I'm like I I I don't know how anyone could get through a scene uh, without cracking up. Wow, thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, we uh we 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 make it because every they, to me everyone's funny to me. Everyone has a different type of fun right. too, mm -hmm. right? Like Dan and Kev is a more uh laid back uh subtle funny. You know what I'm saying? Mine's is kind of in your face. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the energy of my character. The energy of their character is more laid back, and they uh, and they and they're funny is like it bounces off of like no no I can, no I can do that like it, it's just it's a funny that's just not in your face but it's definitely very it's like very funny like uh if like if you're paying attention and you understand more than just one type of humor you know yeah no for sure um I think the evolution of Kareem too has like really shifted in this in this show you know what i mean especially uh, -huh. uh season two i had tweeted out that you were the mvp of this season you know what oh, i mean wow. and, and, and show and showtime picked it up and ended up sharing the tweet oh wow. but it was one of those things of like you know we're really getting to see how much you care about dan we're uh -huh. getting to see the life lessons because even though it's funny uh -huh. you always make sense like at mm -hmm. the end of the day, it's like it's yeah. a logic that you're like, yo, he actually spit some shit. Like yeah, bars, Dan, bars, yeah. <laughs> but, but like conventional Dan, bars, <laughs> yeah. Like 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 Dan, I'm not just with your mom. Like I genuinely care. Yeah, yeah. I want I, you to win, son. I want mm -hmm. you to win. It's just yeah, basically, it's, it's literally any father's real. Uh, it's, it's 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 a fatherly thing. Like when you become like a father, whatever it is, you you realize that uh uh people are. They think you're crazy. They think you're bugging. They think whatever. But later on, they go, "Oh, what my dad was saying. That's that's what I'm dealing with now. My dad told me about this. Like, if you had your father in your life, or not even if it's just a father, father figure, you know right. what I'm saying? Someone who who gave you some game or gave you some honest, you know, conversation with care. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, so he's that kind of guy. He's that guy. But he's just. He's just unique. He's like, you know, but he's not the conventional. Hey, son, you got it. You know, he's not that, you know. <laughs> he's like, come on, man. We're going to fuck your life up. What you going to do? You know what I'm saying? He's like, but it's real. You know what I'm saying? It's funny because, like, I always think back at the end of every episode, I'm like, he's really, like, a very positive person. Like, oh. whatever you throw at Kareem's way, it's like, right, the whole thing with the pipe. He's like, man, like, 
the pipe ain't been leaking all this whole time. And and the cat says, Yeah, that's because you didn't pay your water bill. I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like he's sitting like a silver lining for everything for Kareem, <laughs> which is weird because I'm like, and like you said, his delivery is kind of like uh-huh. you go you go fuck your life up or whatever. Yeah. Which on paper you would say, Oh man, this guy that's rough. So yeah, rough and real negative, but it's like the way you deliver it is like this dude is always looking at the positives. Well, the thing is, honestly, he is a, a, a my, he is a microcosm of me. That's who I am in a certain another way, with a little more edge to it, right? Or a little, you know. But that's how I am in real life. I think about things, and you know, bad things be happening, or or things that I don't even call it bad. I call it things that happen that you don't you don't like. Mm. I don't call it bad because it's it's here to teach you something. We label it bad because we don't like it. But it ain't always bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's everything is here for us to become whatever we're here to become. And once you accept that, you stop getting mad at everything and just analyzing it for what it is and learning, you know, because like, um, it's just, uh, it's just like you ever have somebody ask you a question or something and you, and, and uh, oh, you see them do something, you say, uh, oh, so that's, that's what you're going to do. And you think that's going to help. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you think that's going to help. You know what I'm saying? That's who Kareem is in, and that's who kind of yeah. I am in the sense of, like, think about what you're doing. Pay attention to what you're doing. Get out of your emotions for a second and think about what you're doing. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because once you think about what you're doing, you'll realize, like, what, uh, oh, this is not going to equate to what I want, the results I want. But I'm feeling like I need to do this because of the thing. But when you have somebody on the side who gives you a, a straight up, answer and that's just kind of how i am and as you said when you look at things on paper you look at most of the time you know when people are sensitive and overly whatever they don't get the message because they're caught up in their feelings they just they want to hear it how they want to hear it you know and that's the new thing now that i think the whole world is crazy with that with your tone you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? your tone yeah so you can't tell somebody yo you know uh yo you stepping yo you stepping on my feet yeah but your tone you know, but you wanted to fight me. You know, yo, get on my fucking foot. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's not like, you know what I'm saying? It ain't about my tongue. It's about you on my foot. Get the fuck off my foot. You know? It's the principle. Yeah, it's just like, but but they try to make it about something else right. so they don't feel bad about what they've done. And mm-hmm. that's the little trick that everyone's playing. This, you know, it's a game. That, but Kareem is that guy who tells you straight up, he ain't worried about your feelings. I mean, he worried about your feelings in the grand scheme of things, not in mm-hmm. this Sucker moment. We have a sucker moment. <laughs> tough love, I yeah, would say. Exa- yeah. Exactly. Yeah, simply put, tough love. <laughs> yeah. So you got this line in the latest episode where you say, make it 24 or 56. That's the year my psychic said I'm going to die. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what was that? Yo, oh, 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 so, I think, I think, was that, was I programming something? Yeah, it was in the, it was the security code. code. The security yeah, yeah, code. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so Dan said he would like to imagine a world like Nicholson in The Shining where there's always been a Jack Nicholson and he feels like that's the case with Kareem. <laughs> so he said that, what, in real life? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, he said it in real life, which made me like an alternate universe of Kareem, the character uh-huh. being in The Shining. You know what I'm saying? I'd be the... Like, uh, like showing up if it was 2046 like every year like the fact that you said like your psychic said that you're gonna die at this this random code that you gave right right that's 400 years from now like and like sitting in as as far as the joke of it uh-huh but i didn't see this the thing i've never seen the shining so, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, don't, don't, uh, don't worry right. cream i never i never saw that either, I, brother. I, I'm, I, I'm right there with look, you i don't really watch any scary movies because that's supposed to be a scary movie right mm-hmm. yeah yes, they're not yeah. scary to me so i'll be that's like true. Yeah, it's a scary movie, but I'm not scared. The last Hold thing on. that kind of scared me and it jolted me a little bit was it was some shit years ago. It's called a thing. And the only thing that caught me yeah. was because these kids, they were swimming in some some lake and some thing was in it. You know, like some thing. Right. Right. And I think it was like I was like, it was called like Tales from the Crypt or Twilight Zone or one of them. The, okay. the name of the yeah. show. And yep. what happened was, and they was all swimming to get back because the thing was catching people. But then it was one person who got it caught people, but one person who got by and was like, he got to the he got to the shore and was like, yeah, 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 I beat you, yeah, right. And the shit just came out the water like, ah, and, and got, got him. him. And that was yeah, and that was the only the last thing that ever was. I was like, oh shit, you know. Other than, other than that, <laughs> nothing, nothing. So you're so you're anti horror genre. I'm so. not anti horror, but I don't feel like it's gonna it's not gonna scare me. So I'm like, what am I? I mean, I'll watch it too, you know, for the 
light entertainment, but I, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. I, I think mean, for me, all, all horror movies for me turns into a comedy. Like mm. I'm the worst person to watch horror with. Like mm. I'm sitting there because it's kind of the obvious. It's like right, yeah, dude, dude, the music is coming. Dude, yeah. dude, dude, something about to happen. <laughs> And you're like, why the fuck would you make like that's not realistic? Why somebody just gonna randomly trip? This or, is the this is the black person in the movie right now. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is the black like because that's the shit you be doing. Come on, man. Oh, you gonna walk over there? Who does that? Who does yeah. that? You know what I'm saying? Don't open that door. Shh. That's the white people on your neck. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> complaining about your tone. Yeah, complaining uh, about your tone in the movie. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I, they don't do it. For, I mean, not not that I'm against them. It's just like they they don't really move me like that. So I'll watch one, uh, but I'm not gonna. It's gonna be like some people like, yo, let's watch this. All right, cool. But I'm not really pretty much gonna probably watch it by myself too much. I guess you know. If people say it's good, I'll see. I'll take a look at it. You know. So you you started stand up mm -hmm. over tw twenty years ago. Twenty. Matter you of fact, the other day was my birthday, July twenty first. That makes 25 years. 25 years of stand-up. Yeah, 20, 25 years of stand-up. Over half my life. Comic happy View. Be, happy belated. Thank yeah. you, brother. <laughs> Comic View, show, Showtime at the Apollo. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you came up in the... When you had to come... Well, you couldn't do it with just a, a funny Instagram video, and now you've blown up. You got a, a TV deal or whatever. You, you, you went through the gutter for it. Well, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. How's the game changed for you from when you started to to when you see it now? I mean, with the internet, it's uh, it's got us doing this. You know what I'm saying? Right. The internet is uh, it's really dope. I think it, 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 it it's a freedom. It's a place where you can find freedom, where you don't have to adhere to the industry rules. You don't have to wait for someone to pick you. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You can do the work, and the people will pick you. You know what I'm saying? Because in reality, all we're doing, people don't realize is we're using the industry to meet the people but now we got the internet to meet the people you know right. now, but now you do more than work of yourself but this you know you can do a lot of stuff on the phone and you know what i'm saying but it's good but when you got both that's even better that's even sweeter you know what i'm saying but for the most part i feel like the in the internet has really um the game has really is really what changed the game the internet so it's opened it up lanes for people to show their talent without the industry saying, well, that ain't good, or who's going to get this, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because most of the time, people in the industry are disconnected. They're not amongst the people, right? They're not kicking it with us. They're not, they're not out in the, in, in the streets. They're not, you know, at the parties and at the clubs or at the – I mean, I'm not at the club. I mean, but, but you know what I'm saying? But, you know, they're not amongst the people. They're sitting in – they come out of college and they get these jobs and they're just disconnected. They only they – only, come out of their bubble they live in you know everybody got their little bubbles right people in the hood stay in their little hood bubble people in the in the suburbs and and rich and whatever different bubbles people stay in so when they get in positions with a person like me or certain other people they'd be like i don't get it i don't understand it no one's gonna get it no yes they will the world gets it it's just right. you are not of the world you are of your bubble you know so, like like a show like Flatbush Misdemeanor, which started as a web series and yes. then got picked up by Showtime to become a, the, the TV series now. Yes. Like that wouldn't happen if, if YouTube didn't exist. Like if this was yeah. 2005, for instance, or 2004 before YouTube uh -huh. blew up. Right. Would a show like this even get made or picked up? The thing about it is it would be much harder because what happened is they did bring it to people before the inner, like they first was trying to tell people about it. And most of the time, you mm -hmm. got to show people instead of tell people. So when they made it, uh, well, they made it. They asked me to play the father, and I saw, I played the father in the web series. And they got some other comedians who played the other parts. And uh, the people, uh, it was the people liked it. We liked it, you know. But when you brought, brought it to uh, certain networks, they was just like, eh, we don't get it. We don't, you know. But then we put it in the film. They put it in the film festivals, rave reviews. People mm -hmm. enjoyed it, right? So when they enjoyed it, they're like, "Okay, now the same networks who was like, I don't get it. We like, hey, you know." <laughs> so it's that, you know, it's that, it's that. I forgot what the effect is called, but it's just like the the pretty girl who does who doesn't check for you until you're popular with everyone else, right? You know? And that, now that's got to be 
frustrating though as a creator right as someone who puts out content who creates content it's got to be frustrating that the people making the decision oftentimes don't even uh, know what they're looking at they're just yeah. looking to see the rest of the room how the rest of the room is reacting and then they're going along yeah yeah that's uh it just be because everybody wants to keep their jobs nobody wants to make a mistake but to be an artist or to be to create be legendary or do something amazing you got to make mistakes. Mm. That's what it comes. You know, that's what practice is about. The only thing is everybody want to keep their jobs, you know, oh, and plus there, as I said, and I get we want to keep your job, but also some of them are just not to me uh, knowledgeable enough or have enough experience to pick good stuff or to pick something out of their realm, you know? Right. So it becomes, yeah, it, it can become frustrating. But as I said, with the internet, even if they don't pick you and the people pick you, you're still getting the way you need to go. Right. But some, you know, some people need the stamp of approval of the of the inner of uh, the industry to feel right, you know, or feel like, you know, everyone, you know, like you can go play the NBA and make a lot of money and be famous, but you also can play money overseas and make good money and be famous. You know what I'm saying? But everybody wants the NBA stamp. That's like right. But you can still live a great life the other way too. Like you know what I'm saying? But people Nick, forget that. People forget that right. there's, you know, there's more to life than one way of living and one way of enjoying uh, your life. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, if you can make a good amount of money and do the things you want to do in life, life is great. But people feel like you got to, I think some people feel like you need to stunt, you know, be at a stunter, let, you know, you got to have yeah. a big mansion and 15 car, you know, a bunch of excessive shit that you don't even use to be you solidified. You we at the start of this pod, right when we started recording, you brought up the term liability mindset. Boom. And so, like, go ahead and explain in your mind what the liability mindset is. Um, <laughs> why did you say explain in your mind? But anyway, <laughs> yeah, it, it would be coming up. It would trying be coming to, up I'm trying to sound anyway. like a good interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> trying to sound deep and shit in your mind. <laughs> That shit was fake deep though. I'll sit there. I was like, hey, man. in my mind, like, what other mind is it coming out? <laughs> we might, I'm, I'm gonna use Trayvon mind. Matter of fact, I'm gonna use John yeah. mind for this one. <laughs> but um, no. but uh, uh, oh well, liability mindset is basically you buy the things that cost that that depreciate in value and cost you money, cost you time, instead of an asset mindset, things that increase in value or help you to generate money. That's just a, li a liability mindset means you invest. You don't not invest you because when you invest, that means you're you're expecting a return. The other one is you put money into something, and your return is how people look at you. You know what I'm saying? It's it's right. no real actual uh, legacy you're setting up. No nothing. It's just a flashy for the moment thing. You know that's what liability mindset is about. It doesn't. You know, just like uh. Like an asset mindset is like you put your money into certain stocks, it grows and different things. A uh, liability mindset. All right, stop buying Nikes. Liability. Buying Nike stock asset. You see thing. a lot of you see a lot of that on the comedy circuit. What guys with the, people with the liability mindset? Oh, period. Not even like it's not because comics are just people like everybody else. It's a lot of it's just people. Period. Is this you know? Um, the highly expensive car uh, in the very, and like say the apartment you don't own or the or a house you don't own. Mm -hmm. And that's not to knock people with nice cars who don't own their stuff, but owning things help you generate money. You know what I'm saying? Renting things, you don't generate money. You know what I'm saying? That's liability. Anything that you're renting, you're not, you're, you're throwing away money. You know what I'm saying? That's liability mindset. Uh, uh, so at some point you need to just save the money and buy the things and then you can kind of rent out the thing or you can loan the thing or you can whatever the thing, you know, that's how you make, you know what I'm saying, money. That's I, I that's basically liability asset mindset. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> in, in life. No, for real. I just like got rid of mad shit. Yeah. It's just a, a bunch of shit. And I think mm. that sometimes... You go through those, uh, I guess, life lessons of like of age uh -huh. where shit don't really, you know, matter. 
there, there's an interview with Mike Tyson where, you know, they say, you are the champion of the world, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, all this stuff is garbage. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. at, at the end of the day, you start to find out what what's really, really matters. Yeah, what, what really what's matters. value? What has real value? Yeah. And that comes from, like, what you just, what you decide, when you start deciding what's, what's, uh, what matters, right? Your, your, your friends, your family. Number one, your health. Your health. Because if you ain't got your health, you can't enjoy none of this shit. Yeah, like a billionaire will be motherfucker. A billionaire is not enjoying his day when he has a cold. He's <laughs> <laughs> not enjoying his day when he's sick or he's unhealthy. No one like so the money is not gonna make you like so. Your health is number one. That's mental and physical, and then the rest of the stuff is kind of whatever. Like you know what I'm saying? Because if you take care of yourself, the rest of the shit like say if you take it, you work out. If you work out and you're in shape, your clothes look nice on you. You don't have to buy overly expensive with brands all. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers be having Gucci. Fat as a motherfucker. <laughs> you just a fat nigga in Gucci. <laughs> you know? You know? You know what I'm saying? You don't look better. Yeah. You just you're a fat motherfucker with a bunch of G's around you. <laughs> and to me, them G's now after Gucci after Gucci played us right. Gucci disrespected the black community and black people went back to them and it made me lose a lot of faith in what black people. I mean, I knew he was on some bullshit, but that was like a, okay, there's a level of not loving yourself that I can't get involved with. You know what I'm saying? I can't buy Gucci. Right. I don't even like when I see people with Gucci on, I'm like, y'all playing yourself. I don't say it to the, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it looked like chains to me now. They look like G's look like chains. That's what yeah. I look. That's what I see when I see them because black people have enslaved themselves in that fashion. And talking about we're gonna boycott them for three months. Who does that? Who who puts a time limit on a boycott? <laughs> do, Kareem, do you feel like as a culture, I guess as us as a race too, mm -hmm. we're the most forgiving to other people? Yes, yes. Like in and action, like it's we get small rewards, and then we're like, all right, cool. We you know we're forgiving you know. all people too, man. I feel like we're they're not rewards. All. I don't think they're rewards. They're their distractions, and uh, all right, uh, June, June, uh, Juneteenth, mm. we celebrating another day to party. But what we needed was the bill of protection that the Asians got. Mm -hmm. That's not a yep. reward. That's a distraction. Go ahead, go. They did. They basically say, "Go dance, go party, niggas. You love to dance. Right. Mm -hmm. Go party. And you want an extra like, day yeah, off? We got a day. We got a day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, come on, another. We fell for the banana in the tailpipe again. You know what I'm saying? You're like I, I, I can't be happy about shit. That um, I'm happy that people are happy, but I, I can't. I'm I can't be. I don't feel that shit. That like you're happy that they celebrating the day that they freed our ancestors when our ancestors were never supposed to be but slaves. They, but they're not. They're not celebrating it. What are they celebrating? They're not cel they're, they're they're celebrating the day off, right? Like yeah. like I like for what like I, this was the first year I remember. Like I this was is the this to, is shit I'm talking about. But go ahead. I was trying to set up something, and it was the Monday, and they're like, "Oh, Monday's off." I'm like, "Why is Monday off?" And it's a Juneteenth. I'm like, "You motherfuckers don't care about Juneteenth. It's just it's like Arbor Day or whatever, or President's Day. Nobody yeah. gives a shit. It's yeah. just a day off, and some sales probably coming down the pike in the next couple of years or so." Uh, I said, "White people, first of all, shouldn't get Juneteenth off. They should work." Twice as hard, on, on, on that, right? <laughs> That's one. But two is just the idea that, like, like you said, the 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 like, hey, there's this real awful shit that's happening in this country. What if I gave you an extra Monday off? You done deal? Like the distraction. That's a, it's not a it's, reward. It's like, it's like when the NBA had the bubble, and they had all the players on the jerseys that had like inspirational slogans and then black mm -hmm. lives matter was everywhere and i'm like yeah that's all well and good but like the 30 nba owners are 30 of the richest most powerful men and women in the country if not the world with connections to government on the local state and federal level senators and congressmen and and all mm -hmm. types of people right if y'all wanted to do something to change What's happening to black people in this country? You could. It's a phone call. It's not you something on yeah, the floor or something. On the I think also the, the whole system is is designed like this, right? So it, the system is not fucking up. The system is doing what they designed the system right. to do, right? But as you said, if they decided they want to change things, just like they got gay marriage going, they got that shit going. Transgenders going to be going to be women, uh, and and men. 
black people cannot get protected. They cannot keep. But but and the sad thing is, I feel like black people, we should pay less taxes if anything. We ain't gonna get reparations. Let's pay less taxes because we don't get the the schooling we deserve, and we right. don't get the police, and we don't get the police, and we get assassinated. So we should. Why are we paying people to kill us? We should pay less. We shouldn't pay for police, and we shouldn't pay for for Let's schooling see. because school we not we're not getting none of the benefits. We're not getting all the benefits that we get for our taxes. So we should get right. whatever everyone gets taxed. We should get like maybe one third of uh, one fourth. We should pay one fourth because that's the services we get. We get about one fourth. So let's <laughs> let us pay one fourth. You know what I'm saying? That would be that would be fair. But they would be I, mad I, at that shit too. So it ain't going. <laughs> no, and, they, and it's funny because the, <laughs> they they'll say why? Oh, that's not fair. I lo I love when white people hit you with the that's not fair. I'm like, oh, we talking about fair now? Oh shit! All right, let's then let's talk about because I got a list of things that are not. Well, fair. it's always on, but I don't even like to have those conversations. Because I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Why, why, why are we gonna have this fake conversation about what's fair or not? That's a fake conversation. Well, it's you know it's, it's only because, fair when you're not getting what you want, right? It, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's starving. Is, you eating abundantly, or you getting all these privileges? Motherfuckers who starve and get one thing that you may have that not have gotten. Oh, this shit is unfair. That's a level of greed and selfishness that I don't even want to. Like some shit is just a waste of your time. Like sometimes people even be like, "Yeah, this is a teachable moment." Fuck that! I'm not teaching white people shit, <laughs> and I'm not against you know. Oh, nobody! I'm not teaching nobody shit, yo. Especially a white America got, they got the best educations, the best places to live, the best everything. They told us we couldn't. They wouldn't even allow us to read. Now we gotta teach them. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden we we were our answer wasn't allowed to read. We got the worst educational shit. Our schools are underfunded, but we gotta teach them. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and people would look at me like, they'll look at this and be like, oh, he's angry. No, I'm not. I'm just, that's just what it is. Right. That's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? But when you say what it is, now you're the mad, the angry person. Or now you're well, the mad person. You like, know why. Huh? It's, it, you know why? It's because of your tone. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My skin tone. Hey. Hey. Bars. <laughs> I and think on I, that I, note, bring a bar. I bring a higher bar. I <laughs> barred up. The <laughs> barred up. Barred up. <laughs> Kareem, uh, where where can they find you on social media? Kareem Green twenty one. Um, Kareem Green twenty one on on Instagram and Kareem Green twenty one on Facebook and the Kareem Green on YouTube. Uh, Kareem Green eight on TikTok. Those are the three. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on uh, Twitter too, but I don't really. Talk on Twitter too much. I just post too much. So if you want to actually talk to me, you got to talk to me through Facebook. My Facebook fan page, that's Kareem Green 21 or Instagram. Those okay. are the two that I socialize in. Excuse me. Got a little burpy warpy. You right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then in, in uh, you got any upcoming shows coming up? August 27th and 28th. That's my, that's in Jersey, Plainfield, New Jersey. I'm doing that. Uh, the rest, uh, I'm doing something in Connecticut, actually, next Thursday, the 28th at the New Haven Comedy Club. Uh, I'll say August 28th, 27th, 28th, I'm doing the weekend at Arugas in Plainfield, New Jersey. A 7 o'clock show on Saturday, and a 3 p.m., uh, a 2 p.m. brunch show matinee. on um, on Sunday. Huh? The matinee, I said. Yeah, on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? A little brunch, a little, you know, a little brunch and some How, laughs. How's the crowd for the matinee show? For the brunch show, uh, it's just like the night crowd, but earlier. That's it. So I, I, mean, I don't know. You know, <laughs> like no. Hey, look, you go to a strip club. Guys, wild the day. deep. You be asking wild deep. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you go to a strip club during the day. It's a different crowd. Oh, you go it's to a strip a, club in the day? I never. I used to in, okay. in another life. You know? That was the Darth. That was the Darth in you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Darth in you when you used to go to strip clubs at night with hoodies on. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> what? what? Looking at women and shit. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I knew I knew I had to stop when like the, the server staff knew my name. Oh word. I, oh, you, yeah, was well, you was integrated. You was becoming integrated in the system. It was like cheers <laughs> and shit. They oh. had a button, they had a button with your face on it with wings and and, and tip numbers. <laughs> That's was, a, sick I mean, a, a mean wings. He gets seven wings. He tips, 
He needs 400 in singles. Single wings, 400 in singles. That's what they knew when you came in the door is your wings and your singles. Sir. DJ playing theme music when you walk in and shit. Man. Yeah, you got your own. I'm with the da, 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 da. <laughs> got that cash gun. <laughs> nah, all, all manual. My, all, all manual, my brother. <laughs> all manual. I'm Amish out here. I don't, yeah. I don't, That's don't a different like kind of money when you got a cash gun. You just... You can just yeah. <laughs> You That's run out money real right quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was never at that level. I was strip club at night, but I was at the Dirty Birds though. I used to. I'm I'm strip clubbed out. Like it's, I'm not even yeah. in. Like I've I've done. Like I've enjoyed strip clubs to the level. Like people just go to the strip club, they dance. I used to go to the lock jolt, lock door. That's what they used to call them. I used to call them the Dirty Bird. That's where you go in there. You know what I'm saying they lock the door. Everything go down. Everything go down. Uh, Girls man, putting lemons golden. in their butt. <laughs> See that? Y'all ain't never seen a lemon in your butt. You ain't seen no. that. You, you, you ever seen a lemon? Darth, you ever seen a lemon in your butt? John, what's up? No, you ever, but, but, she did, but she did this before she put the lemon in. She did She did a voila. Oh She's like. And then, and then. Yeah, she did a voila. Look at this. About <laughs> Follow the lemon. <laughs> Oh That's what she God, did. <laughs> I'd never forget her just for her doing this shit with the lemon. <laughs> That's the girl with the it, lemon. It the small man. things. What's the, what, what's the deal? You got a crutch in the background. You you uh you on Oh, crutches? I broke my ankle. This a that's a hold on. Let me show y'all. Oh wow. Oh yeah, oh sure, wow. Man. That's okay. what's happening off camera. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a. I broke it in May, but they done did me dirty, man. They done put a strip. They put a wrap on it, and then and they gave me a shoe. But they were supposed to give me the, the cast the first time. So right. when I went to go see that, they was like, why did they put a cast on it? I was like, I don't know. I, he's, like, uh, he's like, well, why don't you tell him? I was like, I ain't no doctor. I'm not supposed to know to put a cast. <laughs> he said, this was good. You know what I'm saying? And then I, I was like, that's like, you a doctor. Why wouldn't they put a cast on it? Snowing it? They were like, I don't know. So I was like, okay. So then they ended up putting a cast on it. So I got a cast last this Monday that passed. So, so now I basically, I don't know, I guess so two weeks to to a month, uh, I guess I had this cast on now. You, are you going to perform with it? Like, you going to sit on stage? I have been performing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just sit on the, sit on the suit. Mm. You seen people sit down and perform before? Nah. You never seen that? Nah. But stand up? Yeah. No. Nah. sit down and they, perform they, some they, they'll, they'll start, and then all of a sudden they get up and they start walking around. So I'm like, I don't know. I guess that's a reset or something, but. Okay, no, no, I, I, uh, I'll stand up sometimes, even with the cast, because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an active, you know, moving kind of yeah. like energetic person, and with, uh, with the cast, basically, it slows me down a bit, but it's still, I'm finding my way with it. But also, is the funny thing is, I say, you know, good things happen. It's teaching me how to sit my ass down. You know what I'm saying? Huh. Yeah. And be patient, and be like, uh, and realize, like, okay, I don't need to do that. Like, like when your foot fucked up. You know, I'm sorry. I don't know if you curse on you. When your foot, me when your foot messed up or something is messed up, and and you gotta go everywhere to do it, do things. You realize the things you don't need to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, wait, I don't really need to do that. I don't need to go in there and pick that up. I don't. Or I can all take it in one shot. I can wait. Like you just become. I feel like I've become more organized or structured in a sense because, as uh, as for me, and I do know a lot of people, we just waste time doing extra unnecessary shit so this has really shown me okay i don't have to go to the kitchen four times take your ass to the kitchen one time because my hallway is long <laughs> so you know everything and, and i got I, I you know i live in a building so I'm on steps so i can't just run downstairs and go do shit like i usually do i'm like okay everything is a thought more thought out you know mm -hmm. and it's uh, along the levels of do i need to do this now Cause if I go, you know, this is gonna be a lot having to keep going up and up and down. When I'm not, when I'm, when I'm functional, it's it's not even a thought. But now that my ankle broken, I gotta think. Okay, this is hard each time I do this shit. So let me just make it a one time trip. You know. So let me figure out what I'm doing. His name is Kareem Green, but as I said, he, he don't have a name anymore. He's Kareem from Flatbush <laughs> Misdemeanors forever. <laughs> It's, which is a lot better than being like Carlton from Fresh Prince, right? You gotta admit, like if you're gonna be identified yeah. by a character, yeah, yeah, that's a fun character to enjoy. The you know what I'm saying? But I feel like, it, yeah, yeah. But Carlton, I feel like was along the lines of who he is too. 
Yeah, we yeah. finding out a lot we, more about we found, Carlton. We found out a little bit more, too. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's sad, though, because it, you know, he, yeah. he gets his blackness challenged. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's the sad part. He don't, he get, he be like, I don't get support from the black community. Well, I wouldn't have never said no shit like that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. because yeah, you, you don't, you don't got to say that. You, you know, you know, they don't fuck with you. Just be quiet. <laughs> you know what yeah. No, I mean, but also you haven't been doing shit. I haven't seen him. Right. America's, you, you America's really home videos or whatever. That's what he hosts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's about it. But you, you haven't really seen Carlton do other things in a friend. I, I remember him on Silver Spoon, Silver Spoons, yeah, and and in Fresh Prince, and that's it. Pepsi Nothing commercial. Else. Then he had the Pepsi commercial with uh Michael She's Jackson. And okay, but a commercial, but but I'm talking about I mean, like because yeah, like Will, you see Will all the time. Mm-hmm. You see right. other people all the time after they do one project, they do other projects and stuff, right? So uh, I just I feel like I haven't seen him, you know, for him yeah. to make a statement like that anyway. But also when people don't. But it's a black man's plight too, though. You know what I'm saying? Because when a black dude's fuck with a white girl, everybody like, oh, he ain't real. Oh, he's so loud. He uh, black woman do the same thing. Yes, queen. <laughs> yes, queen. <laughs> so I'm clear on that. Everyone wants to control the black man. It's either white man or the black woman. They want to. Everyone to control the black man. You know what I'm saying? Because every everybody got some shit to to say about what we do all the time. You know what I'm saying? Everybody Amen. else get to do their shit in in impunity. You know what I'm saying? Impunity. Everybody do whatever they do in impunity. As soon as a black man do it, oh, you know, it's a problem. Whatever. How do you wait on? Um, imp- how do you spell impunity? I gotta look that word up. <laughs> I m p u n i t y. Do you know what it means? I did, from the context, I do. Okay, cool. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> teaching you teaching it. us, brother. <laughs> but I don't know how to spell most of the stuff. The funny thing is, you gotta just know who you are and what you, you know what I'm saying? Because people, I'm not a good speller at all. You know what I'm saying? I stay on face, they stay tearing my ass up on Facebook for saying stuff to them <laughs> and spelling it wrong, right? So there's a G <laughs> in impunity, by the way. <laughs> is it? That. Yeah. I didn't know that. Because if you'd have asked me, I'd have been like E I M P U I M P E T I M P U P U N. That's it. Pune. Impune. You know what that I-T-Y. means? T Y T Y. Impunity. You know what I'm saying? That would have been my guess. I know what it means though, but that's the thing. I know what words mean sometimes, but I don't know how to spell them all. <laughs> and people try to get me for that, but I don't. I'd be like, look. The thing is though, the difference between me and a lot of people is I I'm clear about who I am and what I do. Right, I make right. money off of words. People, people can spell words. They got vocabularies, good vocabularies with degrees and all that shit. But I mm-hmm. make the money off the words. They're out of boy. So you're <laughs> you're like a smart dummy. <laughs> Not you personally. I'm just saying to tell me I'm spelling something wrong, but I'm the one who makes money off of words, and you just know words. You're like a right. smart dummy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like you can't brag exactly. to me about what you got. But you don't know how to get money off of it. It's you know like saying? telling a carpenter. It's like telling a carpenter, you you ain't got no you ain't got no tools. I got this full tool set, but I don't actually do shit with it. It just sits in my garage where the Boom. carpenters out here actually building, building stuff. Shit. And, Boom. Yep. Boom. And also, I like it, it, as a comedian, we make up word. I can make up a word, and people don't realize words are all made up. They're all made up. I don't know who makes them, but you know, <laughs> matter of fact, we make some of them. Like slang, those are words, right? Those are all words. Right now. Yeah, like you know, what I'm saying all this shit, a lot of this shit, everything around you is made to fuck up. You know what I'm saying these mics we do, every all this shit is a thought. All these are thoughts that are made that brought, brought it. So either way, the point is they they be telling you know oh you can't that's how you spell. I got a bachelor's and whatever, but I make the money yeah. off of words, so it don't make a difference. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, your your bachelor's make mm, you're bragging about nothing. You went to the degree, gave them money. Just to go, uh, there's nothing wrong with having a job, but you're not using the skill that all that education and knowledge you have to to be as great as you can be, basically. Yo, this this man is a wordsmith. This man is is a comedic legend. You can catch him on Flatbush Misdemeanors. You can catch him on Instagram at Kareem Green Twenty One. Thank you. Yeah, man. Th- thank you for giving us it was thank you. like a 20 minute conversation, bro. But you thank you, man. You, you drop bar on bar, man. We just thank had you. to keep you on a little bit longer. So I appreciate it. No problem. It. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Above and beyond. Uh, I try to go above and beyond. So normally I do tw- 15 to 20. I said, 
Um, and honestly, I was sitting there going 15, 15 minutes. I don't even know if I want to do this shit. <laughs> I'm like, why would I wait 15 minutes of my time? With, let me just fucking just, let's just do a real do something that's worth or something. I don't know. Yeah, Cause I'd be like, I, it sounds good. It sounds good. But at the same time, I'll be like, is it worth 15 minutes? Me spending 15, even though it's nothing, but I'd rather do something than nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like I'd rather do like a, tw- a good 25 than a rush 15. Damn. That's, that's I mean, that's part. just, you know, that's just kind of how I, you know, how I look at things at times, you know what I'm saying? Like the quality, the quality, you know what I'm saying? Cause if, if you drop some quality, that's what matters. Uh, and you drop more than enough quality, man. I, I hope we can have you back on uh, at a later date because I feel like, again, we just scratched the surface of the wisdom of Kareem. You can write a book, brother, by the way, with, with your life <laughs> philosophies and stuff based on kind of like your experiences. But then, you know, you throw in some of the character from the show. And, no, know, I'd rather do it all off this podcast. I'm going to do it all off the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I ain't, I'll write a book based on my experiences in this podcast. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the full name. Of, is it the name of this called Bomb? So Bomb. black opinions matter. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Black and that was that opinions, was opinions. What was two M's? Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Oh, yeah. okay. Black opinions matter, motherfucker. Okay. Yeah, and that's by the way, our po- how old's our podcast now, Trey? Like seven years old. Yeah, it's oh, about really? seven. Yeah, it's about yeah, seven. We, yeah. was, we was doing this shit. We was doing this shit before. It was down some in shit the deep, do. yo. Yeah, 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 I was down. In, that's what's up. Yeah. You, yeah, you got the quality mics. What, yeah. what's, John, John, you know, are, were you an uh, engineer or something? Are you not? Are you, uh, I was. I'm producing, high. so I'm just basically taking the show. And I'm a little oh. hot, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> this is this motherfucker. Twenty five. What is it? Forty seven minutes of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> You should look back at your tapes. Just be like, you know what? I need to. I need to. <laughs> I'm be on camera. I need to paint or something. I turn around, paint this wall or something. I'm over here with the mic on. Yo, I got you. Oh god! <laughs> like, and then you cut the mic on. Be like, oh yeah, I'm hot. <laughs> I had no. I had no idea you was hot. I had no idea you was hot. I was like, you did not have to disseminate that information. Motherfuckers be sitting there telling on themselves. It's all good. Like, I'm just enjoying the show. That's all, that's all, I'm just enjoying the show. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm hot. <laughs> oh, I get shit. it. As long as you enjoy yourself, that's good, man. I'm glad to hear that. Appreciate um, it, Kareem, man. Thank y'all. I didn't mean to hold y'all. Thank y'all. No, no, it's I appreciate you, great, man. Uh, definitely worth great. it, man. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I should have took my shit off the back. This look like I'm some type of fucking, <laughs> some type of slaw. That's just a tank top, though. That's a tank top. <laughs> Cause then you know you see shit people background. I see you blurred your shit, Trayvon. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, know, what's going, you know what's going on back there? That nigga got hostages. <laughs> tied up, motherfucker. We don't even know. <laughs> tied up, blurred. Uh, body. That's a body. That's a body. <laughs> you don't know what kind. You got a gamer chair. I know you's a gamer. You's a, you's a gamer chair. You're a yeah. gamer. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's official tissue shit right there. Okay. Yeah, man. <laughs> I never seen no one with the official shit. That was just like some shit I see on TV. Oh yeah, okay. man. It's like the first time I actually seen somebody who really has that a, a gamer yeah. chair. Yeah. Do you make money off that stuff? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. What is it? Yeah. Twitch on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I so, play on Twitch. So people watch you, pay you to watch you play. Yeah, and I talk to them too. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. But I, but, but I normally review the old games. You know what I'm saying? So like, if it's something I played as a kid, uh-huh. people just they relive in nostalgia. Like, oh right, them. right. Okay, you know cool. Do you be giving them little cheat codes and telling them what to do? Or like, yo, if you I, 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 I use it sometimes, but then uh-huh. you know, myself and the we cover the NBA, so we'll talk about anything, any topics. So you oh, know, what okay. I'm saying? yeah. Oh, that's dope. That is dope. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's a, good to know. Good that's to know. another. That's another lane for you too. You yeah. know what I mean? Just well, talking. Games, just, video games. Well, just yeah, nah, you can be playing anything. Talk, whatever. Just talking doing. on Twitch. Anything you doing? Yeah. Like you know, you can be cooking on Twitch. Oh. That's a form. Of, but like the fans who really fuck with you, going right. you know, they just gonna tune be in. Involved. Anyway. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, 
So that's Twitter. Oh, oh yeah. I because I'm just trying can, to figure out which platform I want to focus on, though. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, you can so do show, you can do stand up your own stuff from Twitch, you know what I'm saying? And people just lock in from there. You can you can watch your old shit on Twitch. What you and watch it yourself and then uh, pause and do like a like a director's see, commentary oh, of your own, own shit while people are, are logged in and listening to you and then asking you questions. How long did it take you to get to this uh you know bit of Joe custom? Oh, interesting. Thank you for that knowledge. You know, I learned something too. You see that? You know, what there, you there you go. Sharon yeah, yeah. I'm always up for the, for, the, for the youthful knowledge, man. Because uh, I be, uh, you know, I be in my own world, oblivious. Like I, I be literally in my own world in the sense of, like, it was a time that Facebook and I think Instagram was down. Was it? Oh yeah, yeah. I remember. When I did down. not know. I didn't oh, even yeah, know. No. I didn't know Listen. until later on. We're like, damn. We luckily. And what's the name's back on? And then uh, and I had no idea it was off. That's how like disconnected I be to you know what I'm saying, just being connected. Cause I just, you know, I'm out here just you know taking walks and like just enjoying life, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh like being on my phone all the time is just not a thing for me in a sense of uh every second showing what I'm doing, you know. Yeah, I just don't. I haven't really adapted that, but I'm learning that I gotta figure out how to do some type of shit like that because it's it's just what's what's moving right now. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an it's another t place that you put your shit out there. You know, like you said, yeah. the whole thing is trying to get your shit to the people, and we used to be like a middleman, and now they ain't yeah. no middleman. Right. So like these all these things are just avenues. And now also you get your shit to the people enough, the middleman will come to you. Yeah, they'll come yeah. to you and go, hey. And if you see fit that they can grow what you're doing and, you know, for mm. a fee, because they ain't here for nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's kinda, they can grow what you can do. huh? Real talk. That's kind of what we did. This is comedian named uh, Ian Edwards. That motherfucker funny. He's from he's from uh, Brooklyn, but he lives in L.A. for forever now. But mm. he got this joke where he talking about his grandfather. He 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 bought himself out of slavery. And then. Sold himself back into slavery. He refinanced himself. <laughs> what? <slavery. laughs> that shit is hilarious. He's like, he's the first person to buy himself out of slavery and did sell himself back, in, like basically refinance himself back into slavery. That's, that's amazing. It's hilarious. It's funny, you know. But yeah, but I mean, but that's what you do, though. That's dope. You you create shit. You build. But that's what I was talking about when you're saying assets and liabilities. That's the asset mindset. You create an asset. You have an asset. You sell it, you make some money, and then, you know what I'm saying, uh, and you either be a part of it or you just, you know, just get the money and go, or you create a, a, a partnership where you generate money continuous, continuously, you know? Mm -hmm. But either way, so you know what I was talking about. Like, I think you probably, that's why you maybe wanted to hear the asset versus liability mindset. You were talking about. Yeah, man. I, li I, li yeah. I like, because I like Cause did other it. people. Yeah. Yeah, y'all did that shit. That's dope. Yes, sir. Was he there? Who, Jerv? Jerv? <laughs> oh, oh, hi, guy. <laughs> My bad. I was, I'm taking notes. I'm taking, know, I'm taking know. notes on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 caught, you caught me in mid, like, like typing out the thought and shit. You know so I look like I was about, super spaced out. You know the funny thing you find out if somebody's high, they kind of make you a little high because you're happy that they're high. <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, what's up, what's up, nigga? What's up? You, yeah. What's up? <laughs> Like a baby, you get, you get that baby. You get that boy high. He's like, I'm happy now that he high. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh um, man. Okay, cool. But yeah, but that's dope, man. That's I'm proud of y'all. Congratulations on that too. That's thank dope. You. That's how I you appreciate do it. Thing. Appreciate all it. All right, cool. So um, I'm gonna let y'all go. We did a. Uh, we did two twenty-five minutes. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and four fifteens. That's what's up. <laughs> All right, man. That's Kareem Green, aka Kareem from Flatbush Misdemeanors, man. Like I could not have imagined that we were gonna get that much time with him and he was gonna be that great. Uh, which is really dope and we're really appreciative. Uh but we kind of ran out of time. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do P Valley on the overflow tomorrow we're gonna do um westworld that uh, we'll review westworld tomorrow and uh, we'll also do p valley on that same episode just for this week 
because again, Kareem was so gracious with his time and he really brought it for Big Jerb for Black Trey. I'm Amino Hassan saying, Stay black, motherfucker.